Go to the Book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then we, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his let's pray God I thank you today Lord for your love and kindness for your mercy for your continual love for your people Lord we ask that you would help us today to be able to speak for you Lord allow us Lord to be able to enrich your people with a deeper knowledge and wisdom and love for you we'll give you the praise of the glory for it's already yours and everybody said in Jesus name all right. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Look at somebody and ask them, do you know what travailing is? Look at somebody else and say, you know what travailing is? Did you get any answers back? Anybody know what travailing is? Just at least look it up for us. But go ahead. What's travailing? You know what it is? She said, reaching God for other people. Okay. What would uh, we're going to, have to give a little bit, a little bit, give you a little bit of understanding. Go ahead. It's part of interceding. Yes, sir. Sister Lisa, you got it yet? Well, give us the, give us, give us what you got. You want a mic so everybody can hear you, or are you going to talk loud? You sure? Yep. Can you hear us this weather back right there? Engage yep. in painful or laborious effort. Mm. Say it again. Engage in painful or laborious effort. Mm -hmm. Be in labor. Like of a woman, it's in parentheses. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say, was laboring. Right. Um, Intensive laboring. It says, uh, travailing prayer is a manifestation of the Greek of the heart of God. So in essence, travailing prayer is when we weep and cry over something the Holy Spirit is grieved about. All right, all right. I like all of that. I like all of that. I like all of that. I, I'm glad that she was able to find that quickly and help us to see a little more. We got a good idea. Brother Luis is right. It's interceding. And Sister... Uh, Hillary was right in that, you know, we're, we're trying to reach somebody else. But I don't think we understand the grieving part of the Holy Spirit. I don't think we understand how the Holy Spirit is grieved with our inability to do anything. You children either need to come in or, or, or stay out. Come in here. Might want to go check on them because, in fact, pull them doors open. Because uh, we're not going to have no foolishness. I'm not going to play around in here. This is the house of the Lord. You know I don't play when it comes to this place. You can play outside in a, in a playground, but you ain't going to play here. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. In this scripture reading that I started with, the Bible is clear to us. We pull the doors open. The Bible is clear here in Romans 
He said, for to be carnally minded is what? Death. Death. This is seven or six. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh, what? Cannot please God. You are not going to ever be a travailing saint of God in the flesh. Why are we talking about travailing? It is just to kind of get us ready for the fast that we're going on. Do you know we're going on a fast, Brother Louise? The churches are. I had not said it yet. Don't, don't anybody get nervous yet. And I'm not going to. Now, when I was fasting over at, at the job and I worked over there in topping, and we were doing a bus every six minutes, and I was doing 425 holes in the top of that bus in six minutes' time. Uh, when I fasted then, it wasn't like the fast I'm going to send you all on, or us on. I'm not, I'm going to be a part of it. We're going to be on the Daniel fast. You're going to be able to have some nutrition. The one I was on was without no nutrition. And that can get rough. Amen. That can get rough because it was during the summertime. And you know what? I mean, you haven't been there yet, but summer's coming, brother. In about July and August, you're going to find out that that place is going to be about 110 degrees, maybe. What was that one, honey? It's 118, I think. I took a picture of that one time. It was 118 degrees. That was the temperature on the dial. That wasn't the heat index. So it's going to get rough. But you can make it. I made it. You can make it. God will give you strength. But to be able to really get into a fast and understand why we're fasting. Anybody tell me why we why we why we don't fast? Go ahead, Jim. Well I hope so. Give me anybody give me chapter and verse. Why? No one knows a chapter and verse. What? Isaiah what? No. 58. 58. 58. Anybody got any verses in 58 or just the whole chapter? To loose the bands of wickedness. To loose the bands of wickedness? What else? Come on, there's more to it. I'm going to keep going through this till we get down, till we get a hold of this thing. Well, that is, that, that's part of it, but that ain't the scripture. What does it say? Somebody help me here now. We're going to let some prisoners go free? Loose some bands? Going to let the oppressed go free? What else? We're going to break every yoke. What else? That is it? That's all we're going to do? We're going to bring the poor that are cast out to your house. <laughs> You're going to cover those that are naked? Now, does anybody, hold up right there. Does anybody remember what I was reading during the prayer meeting? Yes. Huh? Yes. Do you remember when I said that you were naked, blind, poor, wretched? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Anybody remember that? When you are naked, as that refers to, and that refers to, what does naked mean? What does it mean? You ain't got any clothes on? You don't have the covering of the mighty God. You're naked and you're visible because you're not covered by Him. And if you read a little further in, in, in that portion of Scripture in Revelations, He says, I want you to go. <laughs> I want you to buy gold that's been tried in the fire. I want you to buy some clothes. I want you to get some clothes that are white. What talk about righteousness. I want you to put on some of Jesus Christ. I want you to have a covering that is not like the world. Amen. You'll never have that covering 
if you're carnal minded, you'll never please God. What is saying, eight? Hey? So they that are in the flesh, what? You cannot please God in carnality. And if you're not fasting, if you're not travailing, what does it say? Laboring hard, laboring painfully, laboring. If you're not laboring in the church, somebody will talk back to me. If you're not laboring in the church, you're not laboring for the church, then you're in your carnal way. So all you're laboring for is for your home. You got money to pay your bills, but you don't help the church out. You don't pay no tithes and don't give no offering. You're in carnal mind. All you're thinking about is me and mine. You ain't thinking about nothing for the Lord. But to be carnally minded is what? Say it again real loud, Sister Hillary. Carnally minded brings you to death. Brings you to death. But if you're in the spirit, there's life and peace. One writer said, joy in the Holy Ghost. See, we always think about flesh. First thing we think about, we got to have something in our belly. Anybody eat today? Anybody said, I don't care nothing about eating? I don't even feel like eating today. I'm going to be so spiritual, I don't even want no food. Well, no spiritual people today, but <laughs> we're all we're thinking about that belly. You can tell some of us think about it a lot. <laughs> Pastor, well, I'll be honest. When you are flesh, fleshly minded, you're not spiritually minded. Therefore, you're not in the mode of pleasing God. If you wake up in the morning, the only thing you got on your mind is to go to your job, do your thing to earn some money, have your lunch, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then go home. You ain't did nothing for the spirit for the spirit. And you can't please God like that. Now I know you have to work. Now don't don't get me twisted. Your Bible teaches you if a man don't work, what's it say? He ought not eat. You, you, ain't, you don't eat, you don't deserve a morsel. That's why people don't understand. I don't feel sorry for people out there who don't have no food. I was on the streets. I was homeless, penniless, no money. You know whose fault that was? This old boy right here. When I got sick and tired of my situation, guess what? I got me some food. <laughs> I went to where I could get me something to eat. I figured out I, I must need a job. But along with getting that job, when I stepped foot in this town and I got my job, I never once failed to give God his pay. <laughs> God has in his word a design that you give him a tenth of what you get. That's his. Don't even belong to you. You make $100, 10 of it ought to be in the church place. That's the way it is. That's the Bible. I don't know about that. Well, come sit in some Tuesday nights and we'll teach it. That's what the Bible teaches. But I'm not concerned so much about that. Is if you're that carnal minded that you're not willing to give God His, I wonder how much travailing you're going to do. Because it takes more effort in the Spirit to travail in the Spirit than it does to get up on your job. Yep, yes, it does. You get up when that bell rings. When, it, when your alarm goes off, you, you get up and go, don't you? You don't want to, but you know you got to go. But let me ask you a question. How quick do we run to this? Everybody got keys to the church. How quick do we run to this church? Fall on our knees and ask God and plead with God and weep and cry and let there be a 
can't hardly even pray in prayer time. It takes everything we got to work it up. And I'm telling you, that's not spiritually minded. When you're spiritually minded, your mind is constantly all through the day. I'm thinking about souls that are lost and my heart and my soul. And I begin to fast and I begin to talk to God. There are a hundred people in Sand Springs that need the Holy Ghost, God. Their souls that are broken, their families are destroyed. God, you're the only one that can fix them. And I come and I plead with the Lord. God's given me some more time to do that. Thank you, Lord, for it. I'm not looking at a negative. I'm thanking him for it. Give me more opportunity to be in this house. More opportunity to be on my knees, on my face. I don't get on my face. That's dirty carpet. Well, you just sit up there on your pious way. But I'll get out on my face. I'll rub my face in the carpet. I'm not too big. I'm not too proud. I love God. I love this place. I wouldn't care if we walked in with muddy feet. I'd still put my face on the dirt with the Lord. Because I want Him to understand my humbleness when I come to Him. You see, when you begin to travail, there's something deeper. I will do this here. It's prayer time. Oh, I'm coming and the music's playing. And, and I begin to pray and I pray for five minutes and well... I'm done praying. Uh, let me go over here and see. I'll pray for Brother Joe for a few minutes. And then, well, I'm going to come over here and see little, little Brother Jimmy. I prayed for him for a little while. And then I'll maybe I'll come back for a couple more minutes. I'll pray here. Or I'll stand at the altar. Or I'll walk the aisle. But real prayer, real traveling will cause you to stay in that altar and not move until you feel the Holy Ghost take over and everything in the atmosphere change. Amen. You won't care what anybody else is doing. Amen. It won't stop you to worry about it, but you'll be praying till God gets a hold of your soul. Amen. And you'll feel the whole atmosphere change, I'm telling you. Amen. When you're travailing, I have been at the church with my face on the ground. And my wife could tell you, I would go over there at what, like 4 o'clock in the morning uh, to Brother Vince's church when I, we were attending there. I would go every morning about 4 o'clock. I'd lay my face on the carpet. Brother Jackson's son, he would go there and meet me there sometimes. Brother Brandon, he would come there sometimes and meet me there quite often. And we would stay there and pray until the atmosphere in that place changed. We would pray for souls. We would pray for the service if it was a service night. Some way, God, we want you to change the atmosphere. Charge this place so that some way when somebody walks in, they'll feel something. Not only would I want them to feel something, but if they're walking by, something would draw. Y'all remember the junkie that came by? That sweet woman? She stood up here. Her head was as balder than mine. I remember her coming in, tears in her eyes. She said, I want to be baptized. I'm a junkie. She didn't care who knew it. I'm a junkie, but I want, to be, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. And we did. We baptized that sweet woman in Jesus' name. Where's she at? I don't know. All I know is I did what God told me to do. All I had to do was water. The Bible says, Paul planted, Paul, and Paul planted the Paul's water. God gave the increase. I did my watering. <laughs> we don't know where God is taking them folks. But they were drawn in this place. Sister Lisa and her husband. We had prayer meetings here. I would pray at that before anybody ever was coming. Praying God sent somebody and they had her. And Brother Robert walked through the doors one Sunday morning. That was a part of prayer. That was part of travailing. And saying, God, I can't go another service without seeing something or somebody. And I did that over and over. I would sit up there and pray. God sent somebody my way to let me know this is the right thing. I travailed with the Lord. You know what would happen? During the service at some point, somebody just walk in. Not been invited, just come on in. 
Wonder why no one's been coming in, walking in on the street. What'd you say, son? No one's been praying hard enough. Well, out of the mouths of babes. Maybe we haven't been praying hard enough. Our church hasn't been travailing enough. Let me give you chapters and verses. Now, I, I, I want to, there's a portion here at the end of this that says, and, uh, where am I? Let's just go on. Let's go to 66 of Isaiah. I want to I wanna get some examples of things I want to try to help us today. Anybody feel the air in here? I think the air is on, but it must be very warm up here. Woo! I feel hot up here. <laughs> Isaiah 66. You know what they say about Isaiah? It's divided like the Bible. Did y'all know that? Yeah. It's divisioned up like the Bible. 27 books. 39. Yeah, well, get deeper in the Word. You'll see what I'm talking about. Verse 2 of 66. For all those things hath mine hand made. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that I pour, uh, that is poor, and what? I will look, listen, I will look even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit, and what? And tremble at my words. You want to know how to get a hold of the Lord's attention? If your spirit is contrite, anybody know what that means? Humble, broken. That's right, Brother Luis. I want God to get a, I want him to notice where I am. The only way that I want to get his attention is I got to make sure. He don't mean poor <laughs> like ain't got no money. Poor in spirit. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I'm broken. I'm humbled down before you. I need your help today. He that killeth an ox as if it as if he slew a man, and he that sacrificed the lamb as if he cut off the dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. What's he talking about? Those people that are doing their own thing. They might as well be doing this other stuff he talked about. And their soul delighted in their what? Their abominations. Sound like the world today. Isn't it? All the fake burnt incense they're offering. All the things they do with their idols and their statues that they pray to. I also will choose their delusions. I'll bring their fears upon them because when I call, what? None did answer. None did answer. And when I spake, what? They didn't hear. You better get an ear to hear what the Spirit said to the church. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Your brother that hated you. That cast you out for my name's sake. Saith let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to you your joy. And they shall what? I don't care what they're saying about you out there. I don't care how they try to pump themselves up above you. I don't care that, that they tell you how spiritual they are. That all these people are so spiritual. They don't know truth at all. But they want to tell you how to be saved. They ain't never been baptized in Jesus' name. Never been filled with the Holy Ghost when you ever speak it in tongues. And now they want to tell you something. Better watch out. The voice of the noise from the city, the voice from the temple, 
the voice from the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies before she travailed. Here's what I want to hear. Now, I want you to read with me. Seven. Ready? Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion, what? She brought forth her children. There's only one way. You can't look. That birth, I, I'll tell you, very few births that women have happen right now. Anybody have a natural birth baby? Horrible. And it didn't happen the minute you laid on that table, put your legs up on those little things. No. That baby came right now. No. There was some travailing, there was some pushing, there was some pain, there was some agony, there was some travailing on your soul. Amen. But when Zion begins to travail, when this church gets in our minds what we really are trying to bring forth, there's no way there's children going to be brought forth until this church begins to travail. Come on. Amen. And part of that travailing is getting your spirit right. Amen. That's what the fasting is for. Amen. Let me get my spirit right. Amen. Let me get my mind right, my attitude right, my thinking right. Because when it's time to bring forth, I don't want to be like the scripture says that they that, that they were there at the at the birth, but they couldn't bring forth. That was a that, that was a, an indictment. The child was right there, but they didn't have strength to bring forth. What a sad thing to have people walk in our house. Feel the presence of the Lord. Repent, be baptized, and yet can't be born in complete birth. The water broke, yeah. The pain was there at the altar, but there was no new birth. What a sad state of affairs for this church if that is to happen. Let's go to John. St. John, John's Gospel, whatever you want to call it. John chapter 16. Let me know when you get there. Amen. Amen. All right. Got a few. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 20. Read with me. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Wait, let's just stop. What do I teach you about verily, verily? Do you know? Huh? I'm speaking to you. Hear me. That's right. I'm speaking to you. Hear me. Don't let this. Don't let this pass. You don't want to miss this. Church, I'm trying to get you to listen to me tonight. I don't want you to miss this. I'm using the words of Jesus Christ now. This is. This ain't pastor. This is the Lord. Read with me. That ye shall weep and lament. But what? The world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman when she is in the travail has sorrow. Because her hour is come. I wonder how many know what hour this is that we're in right now. This is what God is trying to speak to this church because of what I feel the Holy Ghost. God is wanting to do some traumatic things in this house. He's wanting to reach some people that have never been reached before. He's trying to bring about a change in this place. He wants us to get a hold of something more than what we've got a hold of. Amen. This is the hour has come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she what? Remember no more, are you reading with me? The anguish for the joy that a man is born in the world. 
And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. I don't know about you today, but I, I want that joy that nobody can take away. The Holy Ghost is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And if you have been led by the Spirit, if you are in control by the Spirit, your joy can be taken away. Your job can go. Your family can walk away. You can have all kinds of injuries, physical and mental, and that won't take away the joy when you're not led by the flesh, but led by the Spirit. You've got to have a change in your flesh. Amen. You might be sorrowing now. We've got to start weeping and sorrowing right now. He told us so. Ain't that what he said? Yeah. He said, a woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hours come. But as soon as she is delivered of a child, she remembers no more the anguish. I don't think any of us are anguishing enough to bring forth the man child in this world. We've got to do some more anguishing. And ye now therefore have sorrow. He told her, I know that you've got sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy shall no man take from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily. I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in what? My in my name. He will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. He said up unto this point, you ain't asked nothing in my name. And ye shall receive, uh, uh, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. He told us from now on, you're going to ask anything you want from the Father. You're going to use my name. He was starting to reveal himself to those that he was with. His hour was just about to come. He was just about to open up a lot of things. He was getting ready to save all of mankind from their sins that want to be saved. We have to begin to sorrow and beg and plead and cry. Why? Anybody know why we got to do all that? We read it. Nobody knows. But why? But why? She read it in her definition. Things that the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost Mankind is going to hell. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God that there's no one coming into the house. It grieves that spirit. It ought to grieve your spirit. You shouldn't be able to go along your day and see your family and see your friends and talk to all that people and your spirit not be grieved. I talked to a young man who works in the seat department. And I told him, he said, what's going on? What do you know today? Pastor, tell me something. I said, have you talked to anybody about Christ today? He said, uh, no, sir, not yet. I said, how long do you think these people out here? I said, you look around, they're all dying, going to hell. And you say you have the goods. You say you have the keys. To heaven. Amen. You say you know the way to escape hell. What are you doing to save these people? If every one of these people died and you never spoke to them, I wonder if that blood's on your hand. And he hung his head. He said, Pastor, that's powerful. He said, Man, he started to walk away. I could see. He was white with tears. I said, hey, hey. He turned around and said, yes, Pastor. I said, are you going to make a difference today? With someone, find just somebody, one person. Find somebody. 
He said, I'm going to do it. He said, you don't know how much you've helped me today, Pastor. Thank you for waking me up. I'm trying to wake some folks up tonight. I'm trying to wake you up. I seen a post today that said, what's worse than going to hell? Anybody see that? What's worse than going to hell is that when you take your children with them. That'd be worse than you going to hell. What's worse than going? Taking my children with me. What do we travail over? Not just your children. Your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your brothers, your grandmas, your grandpas. What travailing have we done? Genesis chapter 35. Trying to hurry. Chapter 35 of Genesis. Tell me when you're there. Amen. Amen. 35 and 14. You there? Read. Who do you Who do you talk to? Talk to God. Go ahead. And Jacob called the name of that place where God spake with him. What? Bethel. Bethel, or the house of God. All right. And? Ephraim. She travailed. She had hard labor. Let me tell you what that hard labor. I don't know if it was breach. I don't know if a foot was stuck one way or stuck another. But the travail that she was going through, the anguish and the discomfort. Now they didn't have no uh, uh, no block. What do they call that thing that they give you now? They get a spinal block. They didn't have no spinal blocks in her day. Now she really had, she had travail. How do you know, Pastor? I'll read you a little bit at the end if you hadn't read that before. She loses her life. That's what kind of, I wonder how many ready to lose their life over another child being born. What are you willing to give of yourself that somebody else could be born? She was willing to give her own life to make sure that child broke free into a new world. It had life. Let me read why. And it came to pass when she had hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast had, for thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was what? What does that mean? <laughs> for she died that she called his name been on I, for his father called him Benjamin. She died. I wonder how much you're willing to give. How much travail you're willing to go. Are you going to just be a part-time church member where I only come to church on Thursdays, Tuesdays, and Sunday? If you got a key to this house, why can't you come to this house and pray all through the week? At different times, I'm not looking for somebody to call a prayer meeting. Don't you get on the phone and say, hey, I'm going to go pray, let's pray. Why don't you just get in the spirit and two or three that are in the spirit feel the same need to go pray at the same time? You want to see a change in this church? You want to see a change? You want to reach out to this place. This ought to be a place that's more important than your easy chair. More important than anything you've got in your life. But we are not in the spirit as we ought to be. We're not in the spirit as we ought to be. I read to you in the book of Revelations. He said, those that I love, I chastise. I'm not trying to 
make no one mad today. I'm not trying to beat nobody down. I'm trying to tell you God loves you enough to help us be corrected in the way that we're living. This place has to be what? Well, I guess nobody else knows it. I guess I've been preaching to myself for all this time I've been here. This church has to be number one in your life. Yes. Pastor, you're the pastor. you got to say that. No one makes me come to this church. No one holds me hostage and says, you got to go preach tonight. No one tells me you got to study to get a message for them. God didn't come down and say, if you don't go to that church, I'm going to kill you. But I got a love in my heart for this place. I got a love in my spirit for people out there. I love people. I love people. And I want to see more of them go to heaven with me. I want them to go to heaven with me. I really do. No one's making me come. I come because I want to be here and that I love this place. It's number one. My wife can tell you, I go a lot of times without my family. Don't I, Sister Weatherly? Travel all over the country without my family. You think I want to be away from my family? No. But there are things that I'm trying to do so that I can be in tune with God and find out what do you want from me, Lord? What do I need to do? It's not convenient for me. Here in the last, I think the last month, I drove like 2,500 miles. Maybe a little bit more. Why? Trying to find the will of God. That's it. I'll be traveling some more. It's about getting out of flesh and letting flesh be number one. You read it with me in Romans that the flesh is enmity against God. It cannot be subject to God. It can't be subject to God. The flesh won't do it. You've got to have the spirit of God to help you overcome the flesh. Isaiah 53. This is the last one. I'll, I'm going to let you out. I want to explain to you why I feel the way I do. Amen. Got one there? Somebody else? Amen. And starting at verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. And I don't mean can't talk. I don't mean they're stupid. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And this is the question I want to ask. And who shall declare his generation? I wonder which one of you tonight are going to take that place. You read on down through there. It would do you good to read the rest of that. Read what your Savior did for you. He took your place. All of your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace was laid on Him. He was bruised so that you could be healed by His stripes that He took on that day so that you could have the healing in your body, your mind, and your soul. But the simple question Isaiah posed was who will declare his generation? In this generation, I wonder which one of us is going to declare him. Which one are you going to stand and tell somebody about this?
Verse 11 said, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. When he'd seen enough anguish that the master had went through, when that body had been riddled and broken, beat up, bruised, I know none of the bones are broken. Don't get excited. I know what the scripture says. But when they spat in his face, plucked his beard, and did all those things to him, when all that was accomplished and he suffered enough for you and for me, and it pleased God for him to go through all that anguish, that travail, guess what? That's when life was born for you and me. That's when the Lord gave us the opportunity to have life everlasting. Through that travail that Jesus did on the cross, He opened up life forevermore. Whosoever will, let Him come. Drink of the waters of life freely out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of water. God bless that young man. See, that's the right spirit right now. That ought to be their spirit right now. Lord, where am I at? Are you going to declare what the Lord's done? Are you going to travail like he did on that cross? Or does the flesh going to take over and rule you to where you don't make any difference in the world? You want anybody to Christ that you've been saved? Something you ought to think about. A young man's crying. That, that's what that's what we need to be doing tonight. That's what this message is about tonight. Travailing. The weeping at the altar. Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do to reach somebody else? We've got some decisions to make. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Come on. Somebody ought to just be praying right now. Somebody ought to be talking to the Lord right now. Lord, I haven't travailed enough. I haven't been worried about those that are lost. I've been worried about me and mine. God has blessed me with the Holy Ghost. God has blessed me with my life and with the wisdom of knowing who He is. I've been blessed to know Him and yet my friends are dying in a world that don't know Christ. God, I come before You tonight, Lord, thank for those that have come those, Lord, that are searching their hearts and their souls tonight. God, I pray that you would get a heart of, a part of our hearts closer to you tonight through this word. God, I pray that those words that we've spoken will find a logic place within. Lord, in some way, somehow, you can reach the lost in this community and around our world. Lord, help us to understand what real travail is. Help us to use you, Lord, as our marker to put ourselves against, to measure ourselves against what you've done. Lord, we'll give the praise for it's already yours. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. It's good.